Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its technical analysis. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow traders if you find the information in here useful. And uh, yeah, let's get into the fundamentals as we always do. Fundamentals and risk sentiment is what really drives the market and understanding value. So um, getting into the week ahead, uh, next week, um, the US will be publishing retail sales, ind industrial production, housing data and Flash Michigan um, consumer sentiment. So some, some decent potential uh, market moving uh, uh, data um, but I don't really think that's gonna um, it might add to the narrative I think any positive news at the moment for the dollar um, uh, isn't necessarily going to necessarily move the dollar higher um, it seems like the rate cut narrative is well and truly uh, being priced into the market and I'll get into a bit into that in a, in a sec elsewhere other important releases include UK uh, unemployment wage growth retail sales and inflation it's going to be important for the UK, Eurozone tr foreign trade, German investor morale. Uh, German is the Europe's powerhouse. So if investors um, morale is down, then um, it's going to affect, um, you know, the, uh, the Eurozone. China, second quarter GDP growth, industrial production. That's going to be important for global growth narrative as well. Are, is the world in a global slowdown? Is China slowing down or is it, you know, still uh, maintaining its uh, dominance? Retail sales and fixed asset investment. Japan trade balance and Australia employment figures so um, decent week uh, what happened really last week was the narrative that the uh, the Fed is still going to be cutting interest rates and what's quite interesting is this this article in market watch um, and uh, the writer uh, Jeffrey Bartash says an economy gone mad the Fed is going to cut interest rates despite record stock prices and low unemployment and it is a bit of a, um, a strange one uh, interest rate cuts are usually um, I guess synonymous with um, a an economy that's heading into a potential recession but the US is um, you know by far the best uh, economy in the world but um, interesting read I'll leave the link in the description box below but um, uh, someone says, uh, I think a critic of the Fed, Stephen Stanley, says uh, that his case, which is Fed Jerome Powell, uh, for easing is focused almost exclusively on the uncertainty caused by trade negotiations and the resulting drag on business confidence and investment, said uh, you know, Stephen, uh, Stephen Stanley, chief economist. Uh, I find the case for easing incredibly weak. Um, and it's an interesting article because, like I said, um, the economy is doing you know well, um, America's doing well, and uh, not even close to really in, you know recession territory yet. The Federal Reserve is cutting rates, and it's just to probably try and get ahead of potential global slowdown and also use it as a uh, as leverage against China in the uh, in their little trade war that's going on. And I say little, but it's. Um, you know the trade war that is between uh, China and and America, and so we have a one hundred percent ease. This is the CME FedWatch tool, and it's the probability um, of a potential rate cut, and uh, the market is pricing in a seventy-seven point five percent rate cut at 0.25 and a twenty-two point five percent at point five uh, cut. Uh, in July, which is uh, seventeen days from now, just over two weeks from now, end of the month. So um, that's going to be probably the narrative until uh, this happens. And by the way, just as a tip, if they do, if the Federal Reserve do not cut, uh, you probably want to be buying the dollar because it's going to wrong foot the market. If even if they do cut, I don't think that you know the, the dollar is still a sell. Maybe in lead up to it, it's a situation where you've got buy the rumor, sell the fact. Um, a type scenario going on um, and the market is really just pricing in what the uh, a potential cut will be and we'll get into that on the uh, with regards to the technicals so if you want to know a bit more about the fundamentals I have a absolutely free fundamental analysis and sentiment course um, and it basically just goes over the basics of um, 
uh, GDP, inflation rates and interest and um, inflation and interest rates, and uh, a lot of other things as well. How to really trade the news um, and uh, you know risk on and risk off and how it really affects um, prices. So link is in the description box below, and let's get into the um, uh, the technicals now and starting off as we always do on the US dollar index. So what we have US dollar index wise is um, from last week, we'll say actually the week before, I think the 30th, this was updated. Um, uh, prices for the dollar and dollar, Dow Jones dollar index is just a measure of you know dollar strength against uh, the major currencies like the Euro, Yen um, and the Pound. We came up into this area here last week, beginning of last week um, into the supply zone for selling off with Jerome Powell, um, basically talking down the, uh, being very dovish basically on the dollar. So you're seeing a bit of uh, uh, selling off on the Dow Jones dollar index. Um, so if we go to the charts and here we are, what we have is a uh, bit of a demand zone here. This is proof of value right here. Um, so what we're looking at is at the moment, if the dollar starts to rally within this demand zone you're looking for really buy trades on any of the dollar crosses um, at the moment like I said negative sentiment wise on the uh, dollar uh, as there is anticipation of an interest rate cut so you probably may want to potentially buy at the uh, lower end of this demand zone here if prices do come down to here if you're looking to sell the dollar you'd be looking for prices to come really back up to you know this zone here before looking at a sell trade so right now potential buys and if that demand zone doesn't work out then you're looking at this area right here as a level of um, to, to look to buy the uh, the US dollar like I said I don't think the uh, even though the, the US dollar are cutting interest rates or potentially uh, gonna cut interest rates at the end of the month it puts pressure on a lot of the other um, currencies who also want to weaken their uh, currency like the euro, the yen, the Swiss National Bank as well, um, who have said that their currencies are basically overvalued. So um, the weaker the dollar becomes, the more problematic it is for other currencies who also want to weaken their currency. So, um, you know, the, the price doesn't go down forever. So there could be some decent buying opportunities when it comes to the, uh, the dollar and uh, looking for confirmation on the Dow Jones dollar index. So next up we have the dollar yen and again uh, a couple of weeks we came up into this supply zone kind of peaked through it and then we had um, you know the dollar sell off we can see the correlation with the Dow Jones dollar index coming down to this area here. So what we do have now is actually a demand zone within that area. Let's go to dollar yen. And we have a demand zone right there. We also have a demand zone right there. Not sure why. This is uh, this is not here, but we've got supply. We can change that supply zone now because we've made lower highs and potential lower low. So what we're looking for now is potential buy trades either within this zone here, or if prices get down to and I do like this lower area of demand, um, this 107 area. That's where looking to get uh, long. If you're looking to get short. Then you're looking at basically a pullback from here. If prices do pull back from here, then you're looking at potential short trades. And again, the uh, Japanese yen will benefit from a risk off environment. So if again, risk off starts to come into the market, the Japanese yen will strengthen. So uh, that's pretty much uh, those are your options at the moment. And let's just put a supply zone right here as well on the daily. Uh, next, looking at the dollar Swiss franc and the dollar Swiss, um, we did get a move 
you know, from this area here, this demand zone, all the way up, all the way up, and now we're actually pulling back and we're actually into this uh, this demand zone right here. So what we're looking to do now is look for some demand demand zones demand zone right there and also into a demand zone at the moment as we've made higher highs right there so right now would be a decent time for to look for some long trades but again the better area is going to be down into this demand zone if you think about where we are from a ranging perspective where we are from a cheap or an expensive area if you really want to buy the dollar then you know this is an expensive area because the market can't push higher which means that this must be a cheap and a bargain area as prices you know went higher from there proven proof of value so anything above what we would say the 50 percent level is fair value so we're buying in a maybe more the expensive area and anything below this would be a, more of a cheap and a bargain area so what we want to do is um, look for buying opportunities either at this area here or at this zone right here preferably down here if price is negative sentiment pushes prices to where we want to be buyers so decent level right there uh, looking at the dollar um, uh, CAD and the dollar CAD at the moment is uh, really kind of struggling we did have a bit of a um, move up price kind of moved down a bit of a move up and prices are you know continually kind of just grinding to the downside I think the Canadian dollar really is the only um, central bank Bank of Canada at the moment is the only one that's really not that dovish on um, on interest rates so um, I think the Canadian Canadian dollar has been strengthening um, overall and uh, but we're still down into this demand zone and I think this 1.3 round number is gonna be the um, uh, the put in the area if prices are going to reverse from around here and let's go to the charts so at the moment let's take that what we have is uh, price at the moment let's just delete that right so um yeah, I think this 1.3 round number is where prices may want to start to look for um, uh, a reversal if you're looking to buy the dollar. And then we also have an area of demand right there. And in fact, we can pull this demand zone right down to here. And um, this also coincides with, with a level of support and resistance, obvious level. So, um, not only do we have value, we're going to have the supply and demand equation within this zone here as well. So I think this round number is decent for a, uh, a buy trade. Let's just uh, start deleting some of that. Here we are. Can we put it here? Nah, let's put it here, leave it here. <coughs> so again, around here is where we want to probably look for uh, any kind of buy trades. If you're looking to buy the Canadian dollar, take advantage of the immediate trend I'm going to be looking at that area right there and I'm not sure why we have all these uh, these supply zones within this area but it should be there there's one hot stop there um, so again we're looking for prices intraday to come back to this area to look for trend if you're looking at that kind of trend continuation or potentially up into this zone as a level to sell we are at the yearly lows actually we've passed the yearly lows as well if we're looking at 2019 let's go to year to date to the year that's, that was that was the uh, uh, 2019 highs and now we've actually broken past 2019 lows so um, potentially looking for a reversal prices haven't really pulled back um, to, to you know fair value either so we're expecting some sort of uh, pullback as well um, around this area 
maybe not this week, but maybe into the next coming weeks. But if again we get you know the right kind of price action, then we're looking for you know certain buy trades. Um, moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and New Zealand dollar, US dollar. So past couple of weeks have been interesting. Prices came up to this supply zone, sold off a little bit, came down into this hidden demand zone, and then ended up going higher so that was last week's uh, uh, trade right there nice uh, price action again this was due to the dovishness from the Federal Reserve so going to New Zealand dollar US dollar this week and let me just tidy all this up I have no idea why this is uh, this is looking like this so bit of demand there got a bit of supply there what we're looking for right now is for prices to come back into this zone and look for a sell trade if not this higher level right here around is six seven six to six seven eight level would be the second area if you're looking to be a buyer of the New Zealand dollar is basically looking for price to come back into this area here what I'm going to do is start date it there put that there and then put that here as that is some uh, some nice hard in hard out price movement so um, yeah I would say if prices do pull back that's going to be the first area to look for buy trades and at the moment this week would be an area to look for some short trades and you've got some confluence here of support support turning into resistance so um, decent areas to look for some trades this week moving on to the pound dollar the pound dollar the past few weeks did manage to sell off uh, the demand zone really didn't hold there but this one below actually did the pound has been suffering from brexit um, sentiment um, and uh, so it hasn't necessarily been the best pair to look for buy trades let's go to the pound dollar so what we're looking at at the moment is some supply right here and I think that'll probably be from up there the whole area of supply Bit of supply there and price will come down into that demand zone so um, this week we could be looking at short trades right now or anywhere pretty much up into this zone right here and uh, if we're looking for some uh, some confluence within that area uh, let's have a look probably a bit higher up there be, you know you've got some, some support resistance 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 so anywhere I think around this 127 to 128 level we'll be looking for some decent short trades um, again as bad as the uh, the dollar is sentiment wise I think the British pound isn't strengthening because um, you know traders want to be buying the uh, the British pound I think they're probably just taking profit on the US dollar so it's looking at um, uh, any kind of short trades here intraday and then if not then you'll be looking at sell trades around uh, this area right here for the uh, to buy the US dollar looking at the euro um, euro dollar right euro dollar prices you know fell away from this supply zone right here came down into this demand zone here and then um, we basically you know uh, uh, prices are pretty much reversed from here again this is more to do with uh, some negative uh, dollar sentiment rather than uh, euro strength the European Central Bank have pretty much you know trying to weaken their currency and have said um, on numerous occasions that they may actually start introducing stimulus so um, which isn't good for their currency but they have to always uh, try to look for and uh, look to sorry uh, weaken their currency 
to boost inflation. So what have we got here? We've got a level of supply, level of supply, yeah, level of demand right there, and some demand right there. So looking at where we're looking for trades, if you're still looking to get short on the dollar this week, nice area to look for some short trades here. Even better would be this area right here. If you're looking at buying the euro, that would be you know where you're looking for some long trades. If you get a pullback into this level, first touch, well, as you see, this is the, really the first touch of the level. Second touches are okay. And uh, like I said, from an overall range in perspective, You've got that high or that low to that high where prices have been contained. So um, at the moment we're at fair value. Supply at the moment, anything around here would be considered a bargain for the dollar. Anything below here would be a bargain for the euro. As you can see where what prices have done in the past. Next on the list is the euro yen. And the euro yen, um, it's pretty much bounced around this week. <clears throat> Did get a nice reversal a couple of weeks ago, and then prices came down into this kind of spike through that you know demand zone into the lower area of demand, and then you know prices kind of held. And now we're in between, really, um, you know that low and that high again, heading down potentially. The yen probably strengthening due to um, potential risk off sentiment coming into the market, global risk. So let's just clear this up. And uh, start drawing a fresh chart, and then we have a bit of supply right there. So there are supply and demand zones at the moment. So um, what we're looking at is either a move down into that area and look for buy trades on the euro. Um, the euro doesn't necessarily look the strongest at the moment, um, but with, you know, you'd be looking for positive um, news out of uh, Germany and Europe really before looking at buying the euro. If you are looking to buy the Japanese yen, you'd be looking for prices to really kind of come back up into this area. And I do like this uh, this zone right here, this 1, 2, 3, 20 zone as, um, as an area to look for short trades, um, uh, Japanese yen wise, again, especially if risk starts to really kind of come back off um, and the risk off environment would be, you know, Donald Trump um, pretty much saying that he wants, uh, you know, to, to, to ratchet up the rhetoric with China and uh, any kind of deals that are not on the table, then, um, you know, the, the, the Japanese yen will end up uh, strengthening. So uh, those are pretty much your options for this week. Uh, going on to the Australian dollar. US dollar and we did have a couple of weeks ago um, well, last into last week we had a bit of a move down a bit of a move up and then we had the interest rate cut from the RBA which pushed prices lower then we also had you know now the Federal Reserve looking to cut rates so prices you know gone higher a little bit which isn't good for the um, RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia. So um, the higher this goes, the more I'll probably want to be a, uh, a shorter and a buyer of the US dollar as their economy is actually a lot better than the um, Australian economy. So let's look at the price chart and delete some of this. What I'm going to do is put some new supply and demand zones. You've got supply there. You've got a bit of supply around here from a demand perspective you've got demand right there demand right um, I'm gonna say this is going to be a bit of demand it hasn't really uh, um, uh, uh, you know proven um, that you know it's it's demand so it's in a strong area of demand because it hasn't taken out the new highs but you'd have this nice hard in hard out price movement um, and I think this is a decent area of demand, so just be careful. It's not necessarily the best area, but I think it's a decent area of demand in that in that zone. So if you are looking to get long the lower end of that area, so that one zero point uh, six nine two level, 
be a decent area to look for some long trades if you're looking for short trades at the moment uh, the fresher area of supply would be you know at the highs right there and then you've also got some supply around here as well we can turn that into supply uh, supply zone right so that's where we are at the moment again the dollar still regardless of you know rate cuts is the uh, really the uh, best um, uh, economy and currency out of uh, out of the rest and finally we have the Australian dollar Japanese yen uh, again a couple of weeks ago we did have a uh, move up into that supply zone a bit of a sell-off but then prices you know in for the past maybe week or so have really just been um, you know in a sideways market um, again I think there's been less risk off at the moment in the market um, so uh, the Aussie yen really is an indication of risk sentiment so the fact that it's gone sideways uh, means that risk off has really kind of calmed down in the market it's not necessarily risk on but um, you know it's uh, less risk off so let's go to the charts and see what we can update and we have we've got we've got a bit of a zone right here and what's another zone right here so let's just add that one there so at the moment um we're looking for you know any kind of sell trades right now probably more up into this area this higher area here before looking at you know short trades um, and again you'll be buying the Japanese yen based off of risk off sentiment and if you're looking at a risk on play I think the nearest zone is going to be really you know down here before you're looking at any kind of risk on and risk on would be an agreement between um, you know China and um, the US as well as uh, you know global growth um, you know coming back into the market etc so um, these will probably be your areas to look for um, an area and areas to trade you've got that as an area another confluence zone where you've got resistance 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 what I would say though is that again the more times the level is touched the weaker it becomes so what you probably want to do is look for anything um, any kind of manipulation around this area here before looking at you know short trades or look for the 77 round number you know higher before looking at getting short but again just to ensure that risk is off if you're looking to get short so um that's it for this week i hope you enjoyed the analysis if you do have any questions please let me know and i'll try and get back to you as soon as possible uh, guys take care and have a great trading week